Good morning. Welcome to this time of worship at Alberni Valley United Church. We are so glad that you are here with us in person or online. We are an open-minded, open-hearted, LGBTQ Two-Spirit Plus affirming community of faith. We are striving to follow the way of Jesus and seek to engage in the work of compassion, love, and justice in the community around us. Wherever you are in your faith journey, with whatever questions you bring with you today, you are welcome here. We thank you for blessing us with your presence, and we thank God for creating you as the unique person that you are. This morning, we acknowledge that we are gathering on the ancestral lands and unceded territory of the Sashat and Hupacheset people. We are mindful of the rich culture history, and spirituality of the Indigenous peoples who inhabited and cared for this land for generations, long before the first settlers arrived here. We gather in deep gratitude for their past and ongoing hospitality as we continue to live together on their land. We also recognize the contributions Métis, Inuit, and other Indigenous peoples have made in shaping and strengthening this region the provinces, and Canada as a whole. May we walk humbly with God and with the Nuchanath First People. Our announcements for today, uh, Night Temple has been changed from Tuesday evenings to Sunday evenings and will resume on April 28th at 4 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And it's that wonderful time of year again. Spread the word because Alberni Valley United Church bursary applications for the 2024 grade 12 graduates are now available in the narthex and the main foyer to the church. You can join myself and Courageous Community for our new book study on Nice Racism. It's a book titled Nice Racism, beginning April 25th at 10 a.m. in the Courageous Community Room down the hall. The annual Spring Alberni Valley United Church Plant, Book and Bake Sale is scheduled for Saturday, May 11th from 9 to 4. But actually, the market starts at 10, just so you know. And the Affirm team is hosting a games and movie night Wednesday, April 24th from 6 to 7.30, and it's free for all to attend. Everyone is welcome. The Barclay Sounds concert is today at 2. Join us for an afternoon of wonderful music and uplifting energy. They're fabulous. And so our birthdays, are there any birthdays um, in the room today or online? Des. Bill has a big one tomorrow. Pardon? Bill has a big one. Oh, Bill, wow, okay. And a big one. A big one? Wow, okay, <laughs> birthday time. Oh, and <laughs> <laughs> George, 
George Toombs. Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. And is that another hand raised? Is, do you have a birthday coming up? Your dad's birthday. Wow. Another big birthday. Okay. Excellent. And are there any anniversaries? No anniversaries. All right, well, let's sing happy birth. Oh, Brenda. Um, on the line, we have a happy birthday to a granddaughter, Crystal, for Tuesday. Happy birthday to Crystal this Tuesday. Awesome. Jean Thomas. Jean Thomas. Thank you, Jean. Perfect. So today is Earth Sunday, and in honor of Earth Sunday, we're going to try just a new hymn. It's called Holy Ground, and so I invite you to stand and join with the choir as we sing Holy Ground before we start our service. responsive so the, the colors have changed just so you know the yellow I believe is for the worship leadership and the white will be for the congregation it's easier to read so we are here on this fourth Sunday of Easter celebrating our faith that God raised Jesus from life death to life we are here on this earth Sunday celebrating our love of creation he is And join me in our opening prayer, responsive. As we gather, we are thankful for your creation. For light and darkness, for air and sky, for earth and sea, for seeds, harvests, and plant life, for sunlight, moonlight, starlight, for every living creature, soaring, flying, In our actions, meditations, and prayers, may we honor and celebrate creation. May we seek wisdom on how to share our gratitude and love in the good and healing ways. Amen. And join us in our hymn from More Voices United, 126, Are You a Shepherd?
join me in our scriptural litany. It's responsive. I am the good shepherd. Fear not. I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your Lord. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will hold you up with my right hand. Yes, though I walk through the I am your shepherd. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers you shall not drown. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. Lord, you stretch out your hand against the wickedness of my enemies, and your right hand saves me. You are the sheep of my pasture. I have created you, formed you. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, and you are mine. Though many should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. You, Lord, You are my light and my salvation. You are the strength of my life. How great is your goodness towards those who trust in you. I am the Good Shepherd, and I say to you, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He is determined to give you the kingdom. invite you now to join in our United Church Creed. Um, it will be up on the board, hopefully. Please stand for this. You guys have been sitting for a while. And we're going to go into a hymn right after this, so this is just good. Get you limbered up. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus the Word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate Christ's presence, to live with respect to creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And I picked a hymn that Ellen thinks you've done twice before. It's called River, and it's a beautiful hymn. It'll make you start swaying on your spot.
<laughs> okay, so the kids can come up for story time, and I think, I'm not sure where the best spot to do it is, but I'm thinking we'll come over here, and we might do it right at this table. So we're going to stand here at this table. So what is today, besides Sunday? These tables are handbell tables, and there's going to be a concert here in the afternoon, so they have to have special tables to ring the handbells on. So they have to have these kind of things on the table. So we're just going to use this. It's a sponge, so it doesn't wreck the bell. And actually, when you ring a bell and you want it to stop ringing, the best way to do it is to put it on something like this, because then it stops the sound. It's all good. So today is Earth Sunday. So I have this very special little thing that says... Because on Monday, it's... Earth That's right. So today is Earth Sunday. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think this is made of? Um, I have a, um, this, I took this off one of my hangers in my bedroom. Yeah, and this is a hanger. plastic hanger, right? It's made of plastic. So what do you think this is made of? Metal. No, plastic. plastic. It's made of plastic. So, what do you think? What do you think these are made of? These are eye patches. And I had to wear those when I had, and you guys can now keep them. Okay? They, they, your mom can put covered black on them and you can be a pirate. Okay? But they're made of plastic and they covered my eyes when I had surgery on my eyes. So, what do you think this is made of? It's Actually, it's metal and plastic. And what's this made of right here? Why is it string? This is cloth, but guess what the cloth is partly made of? String. Pl plastic. Plastic. Why Boy, there's a lot of things that are made of plastic up here, aren't there? Just a second. No, just leave this alone for just a minute. What is this? String. There's, it's thread, right? Yeah. And what is this spool that the thread is on? What is that made of? Wood. This is made of wood, but what is it made of now? This is made of plastic. Have I just died volume-wise? No. So, what is this made of? Plastic. Plastic and metal. Boy, there's a lot of things made of plastic. I want to look at your shoes next. When you go to the McDonald's or to, where do you guys get to go for? Sometimes. Bare you get to go to bare bones, and when they bring you a drink, they bring it in a glass. glass. And do they give you a straw? Yes. What kind of straw? Plastic. A plastic straw. So when I go now to places and they give me a straw, I bring my own because this is a metal. metal straw, and I have to clean it when I'm done using it. But the reason I do that is because how many times do you use a straw? Lots. No. How many times? Once. once, just once. I'm just going to quickly do this, clip this on. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so you can only use one, right? Yeah. So you only use a one. Now, if you go to McDonald's or a drive through what kind of cup do you get? A, me, a, a, plastic. a plastic cup. And how many times do you use that cup? Once. 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 Right? Should we use things maybe more than once? So these, these things, these lovely little covers, I only got to use once. And then I was supposed to throw them away, and I don't want to put stuff in the land. Phil, how many times do you use a hanger? Lots of times. Lots of times. How many times do you use a pair of scissors? Lots of times. How many times do you use a mouse for your computer? Lots of times. How many times do you use a flashlight? Lots of times. How many times do you use a plastic straw? Once. Once. Do you take juice boxes to school? Only on pizza day. So what do you do with the straw that's in that box? Put it in the garbage, but sometimes you can keep it. I sometimes you can recycle. keep it. Sometimes it goes in recycling, but you know what some people do to it? They throw it in the forest. They throw it in the rivers. They throw it in the ocean. And is that caring for God's earth? No. No, it's not. So I need you to take your hands out from underneath there because you're going to do something for me now. So this is what word? Love. It's love. love. And I want you to pretend, because my heart is about the size of my fist, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, 
my love for God is six times bigger than my own heart. And God said to me that I am supposed to give my love away. So I am going to give you one of my corners, okay? So you get that part of God's love, and you can have this part of God's love, and uh-oh. What happened? There was only two corners, but how many corners are there now? There's more than two. There's three, four, five, six corners. Uh-oh. So let's give um, some love to Ellen. And we'll give some love to your dad. And uh-oh, what's it doing now? It's making more corners. There's more of our love because God's love isn't meant for us to keep. God's love is meant for us to give away. So if all of these pieces were God's love, what would happen? We would give all the love away and things on earth would be better, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. So for Earth Day, are we supposed to love God's earth? Yes. And how do we take care of God's earth? What are we supposed to do with our plastics? Put it in the garbage. Nope, not the garbage. The, re the recycling. Because we want it to not end up in the Ocean. oceans or in the Lake. forest. If you look out at the parking lot on that side, there's a big sign right before the forest. And what, you know what it says? What? No dumping. Because people think it's okay to bring their garbage from their house and just throw it there um, in the, by the river. We but went, in the forest. Is that good? We went with no. Brenda to grab garbage out. That is an amazing idea to do. So did you grab garbage out of there? Yeah. And what's a tire made of? Plastic. Rubber we found plastic. A pillow. You found a pillow. What's fabric made of? Plastic. plastic. So do you have plastic on today? Um, I do. I do. You do because your dress is probably polyester and that's made with plastics. Let me see your shoes. Does it have plastic on them? Yes, my <laughs> shoes have plastic on them. And these are string. They don't have, they might not have plastic if they're made from cotton. Plastic. Yes, there's so plastic there's good plastics the and there's plastics that aren't very good plastics. And we're supposed to make sure that the plastics that are not good plastics, we don't use very often. Good plastics. The, well, this is good plastic, right? This is plastic. And what happens if I don't have this? If I take this one off, then people can't hear me because this one's not working. Um, um, what is that? This is the... What's it? Receiver. It's a receiver, right? Is that what it's called, Wayne? Transmitter. transmitter. This transmits my voice so that everybody can hear my voice. So the people who are online can hear my voice. And when I don't, when it doesn't work, then we have a problem, right? Good plastic. That's good plastic because I can do my work for church with this plastic. Is this good plastic? Good plastic. Good plastic for clothes. What about in your house? Do you have plastic in your house? Uh-huh. What is plastic in your house? No, just leave that in. What's plastic in your house? Toys. Toys? What Lego. else? Lego. Lego? I know. Um, wait, what was that called again? Oh, yeah, my dream tent. Your dream tent is plastic. You know what? Even the pipes in your house that when you turn the tap on and the water goes down the drain, those are all plastic. I think they were better. There's plastic everywhere. But our job to keep care of God's earth is to not use the one-time use plastics. So don't use the straws if you can help it. Get a metal one, and then you can use it every time. We have metal ones. And then you can use them. Guess what? We what? have plastic straws, but you can use them over and over. You can. Some, 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 the some, some things straws. you can the use over. Straws. Those twisty straws you can because your mom can clean them. Let's do a prayer, we okay? We can clean twisty straws. Yes, you can. Okay, let's do a prayer. Ready? You can use them over. Dear God. Dear God. Creator. Creator. Thank you. Thank you. For this, earth. for this earth, we pray for, we pray for the, people the people that don't want to take care of it. Help us, Help us to show them, to show them how, how to care for your, this earth. To, to care for, for this earth. earth. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I believe you're going to go out that way and down, but you can take your pirate eyes with you. You don't want it. I can. Oh. Okay.
our scripture reading this week. There we go. Does it work? Okay. It's not? Okay. We're sharing. We're sharing. So I am the good shepherd. The good, oh, sorry. I, I'm distracted with the microphones. It's our, our reading today is from John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd puts the sheep before himself, sacrifices himself if necessary. A hired man is not a real shepherd. The sheep men mean nothing to him. He sees a wolf come and runs for it, leaving the sheep to be ravaged and scattered by the wolf. He's only in it for the money. The sheep don't matter to him. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and my own sheep know me. In the same way, the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I put the sheep before myself, sacrificing myself if necessary. You need to know that I have other sheep in addition to those in this pen. I need to gather and bring them too. They'll also recognize my voice. Then it will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I freely lay down my life, and so I am free to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down of my own free will. I have the right to lay it down. I also have the right to take it up again. I received this authority personally from my Father. Um, bow your heads now as we pray for this earth and for those people around us. Not sure if I'm on yet. Am I on? Can you hear me now? You're good? Okay, here we go. Let us pray. God of tender mercies, we pray for the world, this grand and sad place, this place of wonder and pain. We pray for our families especially for those who have yet to experience your gentle healing touch. We pray for our community, that in your light together, we will live out the true meaning of our call. We pray for our country, for the gap between the grand story we tell of ourselves and the reality we see often. We pray for those places where the pain and suffering is more than we can comprehend. We pray as your people, as those who have glimpsed something of what your presence can mean. We pray for your glory to cover the earth like the sky that blankets everything. We pray for those on our hearts and on our minds. May you be present in their waking and in their sleeping. We lift up Sarah and her family, Lord, as they prepare for a different journey with their mom as she moves out of hospital. May you be with them. May they see your love shine in the eyes of all that they meet. May they be in the gentle touch of those who care for them. And may you be in the words of encouragement of those who support them. Your disciples asked you how to pray. And so we offer now the prayer you taught us so long ago. Please join me. God of all creation, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I think we have our tech issues all sorted out. So you know now that tomorrow is, in fact, Earth Day. And it's the theme for this year with, um, they have an Earth Day website, actually. And the theme for this year is Planet versus Plastic. So plastic has been around for a long time. 
but it has grown to dangerous levels. On this Earth Day website, they have a bit of a quiz, and so this morning I'm going to give you a little pop quiz. What happens to plastic when left in the environment? And your three answers can be biodegradable and it will eventually disappear, never fully goes away, just breaks into smaller pieces, or there is no such thing as plastic waste because it's all recycled. Which one do you think it is? One, two, or three? <laughs> two. How many million tons of plastic are dumped in our oceans every year? 11, 20, or 50? 50? Okay. It's actually 11. But this is the equivalent of dumping one garbage truck into the ocean every minute. By 2030, it will increase to two dump trucks. And by 2040, they estimate it will be four dump trucks per minute. How many marine species are harmed by plastic pollution? 52, 800, 1,326. 800. 800 of sea mammals actually swallow or get entangled in plastic debris. What percentage of its plastic does Canada recycle? 9, 35, 50, or 75? 9, you're right. The United States of America only recycles 5%. How many plastic drinking straws are used per day? 160,000, 500,000, 16 million or 500 million? Which one? 16 million? 16 million per day. The US is over 500 million per day. It's enough to fill 125 school buses every day. So how long do you think it takes for a plastic bag to decompose? 5 to 10 years, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. It's actually 10 to 20. And Ziploc bags, those bags that we all use because they're so easy to put into the freezer or lunches, never decompose. They break down into microplastics that contain toxins. So this, our world's favorite, favorite material is ravaging the planet. What we leave behind and what will be unearthed by the world in the year, say, 3000, got me thinking about archaeology and the discovery of past civilizations. There's always excitement on the field when you're doing a discovery like that. It begins with that painstaking process of taking the little brooms and carefully brushing away the little pieces of earth dust and they uncover a plate or a trinket or a fork. And you see that there's museums that are set up where kids actually get to dig in the sand and discover a plastic dinosaur. There are shows on Discovery Channel that are solely focused on discovering of our planet, the curse of Oak Island, where millions of dollars have been spent trying to figure out what treasure is supposedly buried there. The world's population seems to have this unquenchable thirst for digging deeper into the earth to not only tap its resources, but to find the treasures that are buried deep within. Now, there's lots of happenstance discoveries. I mean, they've discovered bombs in fields or under road work that's being excavated. You know, there's people that walk along the riverbed or in a field and they discover something that could be prehistoric bones. We have museums and sites that are designated for those discoveries, so we get to look back and see how things used to be. Plastic was actually first introduced in 1907. Mass production started in the 1950s. And between 1950 and 2017, 9.2 billion tons of it had been produced. Fast forward, 
In 2020, just in 2020, over 400 million tons was produced in that one year. Now, when I think about my home and where I live, plastic is everywhere. Picture frames, trophies, irons, sewing machines, computers, cords, dishwashers, everything, even the binding on our hymnals can be plastic. Covers are everywhere. They use it in surgeries. They use it on your vehicle. It's so commonplace that often we don't register that it's plastic. In a book called The Earth After Us, Jan Zalzuwix explains that it might be like for people to discover how we lived. Now, we currently live in an ice age, and it started 2.6 million years ago. But a million years from now, we might all be extinct. With the Earth's, Earth's climate crisis, there's global warming, diminishing biodiversity. It's possible. So what would be discovered should we not become extinct? What would they discover about how we lived? Now, they wouldn't walk into the structure like this. It would be just the frame or the foundation of where, where we are right now. But they would look for other signs in order to determine what that structure actually might have looked like. They would look at the rock formations and the layers of the earth to find out what history of this area is. If we were to look at the bedrock of the land out by Sprout Lake or even here in Port Alberni, what would we discover? Our legacy, what we are leaving behind to be discovered, is currently floating on oceans and in waterways, littering it and finally submerging the floors of our rivers and oceans and lakes and landfills. It's covering the earth. We're creating a layer within the layers that form this earth of plastic, something that will not and has not decomposed, something that's killing off species of birds and animals and plants and marine life. When God created the earth and all living things in it, God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has life in it, I give every green plant for food. And so it was. God didn't mention plastic. The number of sea creatures and birds and beasts that are dying from ingesting plastics is actually at an all-time high. The microplastics and microfibers are so minuscule, they can't be seen by the naked eye. We can see straws. We can see the plastic bags or the milk cartons that float on water and fill our, our land sites, we cannot see the recycled microplastic fibers that are in being ingested as the creatures of this earth look for food. I just saw an article the other day about people who are actually taking clothing, polyester clothing, it's plastic, made from plastics, and they are actually grinding it down and making furniture from it. All of those clothes that we think, well, we're going to donate them to the goodwill and it's going to go to a good cause, that's not where they go. A lot of them end up in the landfill. And so these people are collecting all of that unused clothing and actually creating furniture with it. The first Earth Day was April the 26th of 1970. And it was two years after astronaut Bill Andres sent a photo from the back from space of planet Earth. And that picture changed the world. A picture that made us look at the world from a different perspective and realize what we had. And since the 1970s, our world has worked tirelessly at making significant changes to the way we use water, to how and what we emit into the air, and what we throw into our landfill. Michael Stifler writes, but we have continued to consume resources beyond what our Earth can sustainably provide. And today's environmental problems are more daunting and complex than those we faced in the 60s and 70s. We have come to a new place where we find ourselves at a tipping point 
of peak everything. Climate destruction, excessive, hab hab mm. excessive habitat degradation, species extinction, and resource exhaustion. We are finding that parts of our world are falling silent. Vibrant ecosystems have become so compromised that their particular sounds have been reduced to a whisper where we can only hear the hollow echo of a mechanical presence. We've become detached, unaware of how our lives interact with the environment and the lives of other people around the world. Wendell Berry, who is an author, a poet, a conservationist, and a Christian, writes, when we desecrate the land, we condemn ourselves to spiritual and moral loneliness and others to want. The question is not how to save the planet, but how to care for each of the planet's millions of humans and natural neighborhoods. Now we can recognize the environmental damage and social realities all around us, and we can develop a really broad creation care attitude approach to everyday actions and to our worship. We can reduce the noise of our existence and learn to better listen to that continuing song of our creation. We've got stained glass windows in here that are absolutely beautiful. That stained glass has those vibrant colors of land and sky, of a rainbow. We depict the various areas on this earth that give the earth its hues and shades. We are perfect images of what our respect for creation should or could look like. Christ said, I am. I am the good shepherd. I will lay down my life for the sheep. I will not leave you when the wolf comes. You matter to me. Christ freely laid down his life for us so we can live. And each day we get to get up and breathe in the beautiful air on this island and are thankful that God has given us life. But this life comes with that responsibility to care for the earth because God has given it to us to take care of. So on this Earth Day, what would Jesus do? What are we being called as his disciples on this earth to do? We reduce, we reuse, we recycle all into bins. A green bin, a blue bin, a back bin, all made from plastics. Yet there are still so many things that can't be recycled. And there are so many people that just cannot be bothered to sort and put what they no longer want in the right places. They dump in the back roads in the mountains because it's too much bother. So my question is, how long has that sign been up in the parking lot that says no dumping? Years. How many years? A long time, right? Because people see a space and they don't want to take that effort. As disciples living out the calling of Christ, we speak about peace on earth. And through Advent, we share and we pray and we live reflecting a peace that passes all understanding. And we have to make peace with the earth. Thank the earth for what is freely given to us. We take and we abuse this planet, often with no regard to what, we've been gift what we are gifting to the future generations. The earth is a blessed, sacred creation, and we are standing and walking and working on holy ground. Humanity has to learn ways that allow our earth to, to thrive. God calls us to care for each other and to be faithful stewards of our earth, that United Church Creed that I had you recite earlier was actually first created in 1968, and the starting line was, man is not alone. And it was amended in 1980 to make it more inclusive, and again in 1994, so they could add the line to live with respect in creation. This is an affirmation of our faith, of where we see God, of how we believe God works. We believe in God who works in us and others by the Spirit. Where do you see God? Where do you find God? I know that I find God most times when I'm outdoors. 
Somewhere, anywhere outdoors is where I feel God the most. Because God exists in the fields that we plow, in the soil that we work, in the harvest that it produces. God exists in the snowfalls and waterfalls and in the waters and in the fish. God exists in the waters that flood the earth. God exists in all of nature. And long before we arrived here and set up houses and towns and churches and roadways, this land was open and filled with what the earth was offering. This was and still is the unceded territory of the Shashat and Hupacheseth people who cared and lived and still care and live with respect to the creator and creation long before we arrived and long after we are gone. In the beginning, God saw what was good and he gave it to us to use, not abuse. I've often wondered what the province looked like when it was first discovered. Are the areas that seem to flood so much now actually areas where water used to be and then we decided, oh, the water can go somewhere else? Have we built and are we building with historical information to ensure that the areas are actually habitable. I know back home in Alberta, there was an area right beside a highway. My dad was the mayor at the time and they wanted to take that area and they wanted to create it into housing. And my dad was fully against it because it was a slough. And he knew that in the summer, when it poured rain, it would fill, the basin would fill. They have a football field very close to that, that actually is down in sort of a basin. And when they have spring runoff, and when they have heavy rains, people go boating on it, because that's how much the water fills. And my dad passed away back in 1991, and they've since put the RCMP building right on the spot that was a slough. I just, I don't understand it. So are we being greedy or re unrealistic in how we develop our communities? The cleanup of this earth is daunting and it's too much for just me or just you to do. But as faithful shepherds of the earth, as disciples of Christ and the sheep of his flock, remember this. Throughout Jesus' ministry, Jesus does not heal all the lepers in Palestine only the ones that are right in front of him. Jesus doesn't heal all the blind people in Jerusalem, only the one right in front of him. And Jesus didn't feed everyone in Judea, only the 5,000 that were right in front of him. We can't take care of the whole of God's creation on our own but we can take care of what is right in front of us. We can change one thing at a time. That much we can do. And who knows, we might end up cleaning up the whole earth, one person at a time, taking care of what is right in front of them. Amen. And now I'm going to ask you to please rise and join in singing More Voices, number 30. It's a song of praise to our maker.
seated. And I invite you now, as we read responsively our prayer of confession, I will be reading the yellow and you will be reading the white. Let us pray. Holy One, we are blessed to live in a land of beautiful natural resources. We are blessed. We recognize that these blessings are not extended to others. We recognize that our privilege allows us to exploit others. We recognize that in this country and overseas, mining has allowed us to reap the rewards of natural resources, while also harming your creation and fracturing. We recognize the harm caused by our want for more. Heal us in our desire for ever more resources. Forgive those times when we do not speak up against injustice and embolden us to be agents of your change in this world. Amen. Scripture assures us the Lord is our shepherd we shall not want. And as a shepherd cares for scattered sheep, our God cares, forgives us, and calls us into community. We, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. So last Sunday when I was here, we tried a new hymn called These Gifts We Bring. And after we read responsibly our prayer of dedication, we will also be singing our hymn, These Gifts We Bring, so I invite you to rise and stand while we dedicate the gifts that we've been given through par, through our time and our talents with this church. Let us pray. Spirit of life, you are generous beyond all understanding. You have given us everything good, and we thank you. We ask that you accept what we have shared, our money, our time, our energy, and our talents. May your blessings be with these gifts and on the lives of all who have shared so generously. Amen. Join us for our final hymn this morning. It's in More Voices, number 510. We have this ministry.
Go forth and care for creation. We say it when we say our creed. May you go now to love the earth as much as God loves you. Go in peace to love and serve. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.